Hello! In this video, I will explain the scoped locking software design pattern. Scoped locking is about using or abusing the normal scope semantics of a programming language for acquiring and releasing locks. The problem is that we as a client sometimes forget to release locks. We are calling some method and this method use locks. So the idea is, whenever we enter a critical section, we acquire a local variable on our stack. The compiler calls the constructor of this variable and the constructor acquires the lock. When we are finished with our work, the method returns and with that also the scope is unwinded and deleted and the compiler automatically calls the destructor of our object and the destructor releases our lock again, so we cannot forget it. How does this look like in source code? In this example, you see an increment function which acquires this lock guard using a mutex, but it does not unlock it again. This happens automatically when the stack for this function is unwinded. This is a simplified implementation of the lock guard, and as you can see in the constructor, as soon as the variable is created on the stack, the mutex is stored and it's locked. And when we leave our current scope, the destructor is called and the mutex is unlocked again. The context is that we have to protect a critical section and we are using locks for that. The problem is, how can we avoid forgetting to release these locks? For simple functions, this is easy. But sometimes you have multiple return points and maybe you have exception handling. Then it's not that easy. The forces are, we want to protect the critical section with a lock. It could be that the section has multiple exit points, so multiple returns. And the problem is that developers tend to forget to release the locks on the right places because they have to release the lock on all exit points. And in exception or error cases, it's not that easy to see which locks are currently held and which are free and don't have to be unlocked again. So the solution is to implement a class which acquires a mutex in the constructor, it locks it there and releases the mutex in the destructor, it unlocks it there. Then we want to hide the copy constructor and assignment operator similar to the auto pointer or unique pointer so that no one can copy our scoped lock. We use this variable like a normal stack variable and we rely on the compiler to call the destructor as soon as we leave the scope and the stack is unwinded. What are the consequences? It increases robustness of our source code. We cannot forget to unlock. It's very easy to use, but there is a problem. It could happen that when, that when we use this scoped locking in recursive calls of our function, then we could enter a potential deadlock situation. But this could be easily solved by using, by using a re-entrance lock, which allows for multiple reacquisitions by the th same thread. There are some limitations due to the language which is used. For example, doing a long jump could break our stack unwinding semantics and therefore also break the scoped locking pattern. Okay, scoped locking. Think of using a bubble wrap around your locks. 